you may have touched on some of these, but I know that you go through um, some of the myths of yeah, marriage. Yeah. Um, if you haven't already, what can you throw out a couple? I of think the myths? one of the biggest ones, and this might be the most controversial one, mm -hmm. but I'm a big proponent. That there is no one. The one. Yeah, there isn't a the one. I, I think you most people could be happily and 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 married and in a fulfilling marriage with hundreds of other people. Is that an American thing almost, or a Western kind of invention maybe? You know, I, I don't know if it's exclusively, I think it's more Western than, than else. I think we emphasize it more, but, but we sort of Christianize it even within the church. We have this notion, well, God's created one person just for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think scripture completely undercuts that. When Paul says in 1 Corinthians seven thirty nine, talking to women, first he says, consider singleness because it's an option. Mm -hmm. This is, but if you want to get married, go ahead. And, and, and this is a direct quote, 1 Corinthians 7, 39. She is free to marry anyone she wishes, mm -hmm. only in the Lord. So, so Paul makes it explicitly clear. Whether or not you get married, it's your call. Who you marry, it's your call. You want to marry an introvert, extrovert, knock mm -hmm. yourself out. Athlete guy, business guy, artsy guy, poetic guy, it's, 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 mm -hmm. it's your call. Just make sure he's in the Lord. And so, Because I think this notion of the one... It, it, it causes men and women to make exceptions. If they're thinking, trying to second guess that this is the one, and they notice that the one is very angry, uh, or can, bitter, we will, or selfish, well, what are you going to do? If he's the one, you know, <laughs> and, and you want to be married, it, and, you know, and if you just look at it a practical matter, uh, somebody like Jennifer Lopez blows the map. You know, because you have three or four marriages, you've already set it up, then somebody got the wrong person if there's only one for each person. So it, it's just, I, I think in one sense, we put too much emphasis on marriage. See, if I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the reason, yeah, I, I, I love sharing this life with a woman who's also my sister in Christ, but that won't define me. It's not the main source of my satisfaction. And that's why I think the Bible says it's up to you whether you get married who you marry, that's secondary to are you seeking first my kingdom. The Bible doesn't say seek first a great marriage partner. It doesn't say seek first your happiness. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And so I think it's a free notion to apply the scriptures and to say it's our call. There, there is no supposed to. There's some, it's not like you're disobedient if you don't want to marry some. I've seen some people marry some and they thought, I, I really don't want to marry this guy. This is a real case. So when I really don't... There was this guy that she wanted to marry. Mm -hmm. She came home and her parents had somebody else picked out for her. And th they said, we think this is God's call. And she, she became convinced, well, maybe this is who God wants me to marry because I don't really want to marry him. But God wants me to marry him. And so she did. She broke off with the other guy. Mm -hmm. She married this guy. Really tough couple decades of marriage. Yeah. And then uh, ended up remarrying the other guy. Later, Eventually. and they've wow. had a very happy marriage in that. But, wow. but, but that notion of the, you're supposed to, I, I think it's a misunderstanding of providence. Mm -hmm. I, I think the norm of it's not that God can't lead two people together. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not putting God in a box. But I think the teaching of Scripture is that it's our call, it's our choice. We need to be responsible and we need to make it for the right reasons. I was not to trying say. to second guess God. Here, here's what I said when a guy. Mm -hmm. Pushed this, he, he pushed me. I said, Gary, I just read a book about God being the ultimate matchmaker. And so he goes, obviously, he disagrees with you. And I said, yeah. I said, well, how do you know somebody's the one? If it's so, I mean, it's a very important thing, who you marry. If, if God has one person picked out for you, I go, where in Scripture does it say, this is how you know this is the one? Kelly, I've never gotten an answer to that. Mm -hmm. and, and I can't believe that God would say, you've got to find the one, but I'm not going to tell you how you know so-and-so is the one. But he does say in Proverbs, Proverbs 31, a whole list for men. Mm -hmm. Men, a noble wife who can find. And then it tells you, here's what you look for. Not second-guessing God, not a sense of destiny. A woman who does this is to be praised. A woman who does this it says, guys, don't be overly influenced by her appearance. That fades. Mm -hmm. Charm can be deceiving. But then 3130, find a woman who fears the Lord. A godly woman is a great gift. Mm -hmm. and, and so you put Proverbs and 1 Corinthians 7 together, and I think you have a wise basis to make a choice rather than trying to guess that this is, quote unquote, the God's one. God's will for you, right. I recommend you get Sacred Search, and especially if you are single or if you are raising a single. Thank you very much. Thank you.